general election has been called in the UK. The country is suffering from one of its worst economic slumps in the post-war period. Government borrowing is rising and banks have been propped up by state aid. Public sector workers are striking over planned spending cuts and voters face the prospect of higher taxes. There is also much talk of how to deal with the prospect of a hung parliament. But this is not 2010. This is 1974. The crisis which Britain faces today is indeed a very serious one. The economic crisis Britain faces is the gravest since the war. In February 1974, Conservative Prime Minister Edward Heath decided to call a snap election despite having 18 months to go before the end of the Parliament. The government's just announced it's going to call a general election. How do you feel about this? I should have had about months ago. What do you think the outcome will be? I'll get back in again. In fact, it was a neck and neck race with odds too close to call. Um, yes, so we have 8 to 13 Labour, 11 to 10 Conservatives and 100 to 1 Liberals. You'll have £10 on Conservatives at 11 to 10, yes sir. For that particular punter, and for Prime Minister Heath, it was a gamble they ultimately lost. Despite the Tories winning more votes across the country, Labour took four more seats, 301 versus 297. Britain was faced with its first hung parliament since 1929. Over the weekend after the election, Ted Heath, as the incumbent Prime Minister, negotiated with the Liberals to see whether they might continue to support him as a minority government. In the event, they couldn't reach agreement, and on the Monday, four days after the election, he went to Buckingham Palace and offered his resignation and advised the Queen to invite the Labour leader, Harold Wilson, to form a government. So, is the political situation today comparable to back then? Harold Wilson formed his government with a very, very tiny majority and then went to the country again in October now, I don't think that the present situation will allow for that because clearly the financial situation is such that uh, the markets are not going to tolerate a minority government trying to do things popularly in order to get a quick second election. I don't, don't think that can be repeated. Then, as now, financial markets found the uncertainty of a hung parliament unsettling. Do you think either a minority government or a Labour government is going to have an adverse effect on the money markets and the stock exchange? Uh, I do. Yes, I think they probably will. Do you think that Britain will recover, or do you think there'll have to be an election within a year? I think there'll probably be another election within a year. The prospect of a hung parliament in 2010 has already had an impact on the financial markets, particularly the pound. Each time the Conservative Party's lead in the opinion polls has fallen, Sterling has weakened against the US dollar. So what lessons can we learn about the markets from the experience of 1974? The economy was very different then. It was really a question of measuring how the government was going to deal with the public sector. Was the stock market good value or bad value, or could the pound be clattered anymore? It seems the stock market was considered bad value. The all-share index fell almost 15% in the month after polling day. The pound, however, experienced something of a rally, gaining in strength against the US dollar in the immediate aftermath of the election. It was a short-lived rally, though. A year later, financial markets lost confidence in sterling yet again as the British economy continued to stumble. And by 1976, with the pound still plummeting, the government was forced to go cap in hand to the IMF for help. Our problem today, if there is a comparison, is that we're not ruled yet by the IMF or by the question of our credit rating being downgraded yet. And therefore, the concern that we have today over the possibility of a hung parliament is, in my opinion, much more horrific than it was in 74 and 76. One thing's for sure, whatever form the government takes after the election, it will have to tackle the massive fiscal deficit or risk losing its coveted AAA credit rating. History tells us that the humiliation of asking the IMF for help in the 70s shredded confidence in the Labour government and helped sweep them out of power for the next 18 years. That's a lesson the British government would do well to heed because come May the 7th in financial markets, the clock will be ticking. I'm Rachel Armstrong, this is Reuters.